this video will explore the raw panel dummies emulation application in uh, some more depth. We will look at the, um, the most basic parameters that you might want to uh, enable. And in the previous videos, we downloaded the raw panel dummies, which is running this over here, this emulated RackFusion Live. And we also downloaded the raw panel explorer. Those are the two tools that we will generally use. The explorer is your client. The dummies is your server. And the dummies, of course, represents physical panels. It's a way to get the physical panels emulated so that you can do proper integration without having the hardware. And it is so close to the actual hardware implementation that even the dummies is going to give you screen saving. So you see on these panels, it is currently in screen saving mode because it is like left alone for more than two, two minutes. If I press this, you see that I wake up the panel. So even that is emulated for you. You can also, if you connect to it with the Explorer over here, you and let's say that we uh, just um, uh, fire it up like this, then, uh, no, wait, we can actually, yeah, we, we do that. You can simulate brightness levels. You could you could say, hey, let's just turn the brightness down to one or to lowest to, you know, like turn it off and so on. So even those things are being emulated by, yeah, the emulator. So it's really, really powerful. and. Um, tool you can also emulate sleep and so on so there's a lot of things there that you can play with but um there is uh, one thing that i also just want to bring into the mix because now i'm sitting here on a mac and i have this nice terminal and uh, so on and what we did see in the previous videos is how even on a mac there are certain things that are a little more clumsy or uh, hmm, uh, take some more effort than on windows and one of them was uh, security we needed to go through some hoops of enabling the um, execution bit on the files and so on but um, and, and then also we saw that uh, let me just see what is the um, maybe I could basically do localhost here and so now I'm connecting here to, to my panel uh, let me send list it says hey this is a right fusion live over here it is uh, the simulated environment in terms of platform it gives me some information on, on, on what it supports and so on and if I'm pressing uh, buttons on the emulator then you'll see that these are arriving as triggers in my connection so one thing I wanted to show you uh, to begin with is basically that we can do the same on Windows so if we uh, use an application like putty or putty uh, I should have it. Don't I? Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Then you would use the other telnet and then type in the host address, which is, ooh, let me see. Maybe I, since I am running here on, okay, 1103. So let's, let's do that and hope the best for that. Like this, port 9923, 9923. But there is one thing that we need to set. And I think it's on the keyboard. Or here, or here. Maybe ah, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's right here. Make sure that you have. Let's just say these two being set. Or is it one of them? Anyway, make sure you set that. We have this in place. Open, and I hope we are connected now. So let's type in list. I don't. Okay, list. Ah, okay, so maybe I just needed to do this twice. Now, um, so. The, the, the little uh, LFCR flag is to make sure that you get proper line breaks. But now you can see that I get the same on PuTTY, on, on Windows. So all the um, emulation I'm doing on my Mac will also be true for PC. Okay, so um, the video here is uh, going to deal with the various command line options that I have. And uh, once again, keep in mind, you can download the same applications for Windows. We have um, compiled binaries for Mac, Windows, and Linux, all platforms basically, so don't worry about that. Now here I'm running my emulator, I'll just keep that, but the raw panel dummies, I'll just um, stop that for a while, and then let's open this up a little bit more. Now, if you run raw panel dummies, with the parameter called dot, uh, dash H, you get all the help that you need. But the options that we're looking for here is this one, dark. Dark is nice because it's gonna give you a um, a, a dark uh, skin for your, um, oof, okay, I forgot to still have panel Rack Fusion Live. So um, yeah, that is dark mode. Uh, some of you might uh, prefer that. Um, the uh, panel, um, the, the, the panel parameter is how you actually open a panel. But if you use list, you get a list of all the panels that you can open. And you can also make a comma separated list of these. So for instance, um, we can actually emulate multiple panels by having panel and then we could choose, let's say a rec control duo comma, then a rec pro 
comment. So let's just do that and see what happens. Now it's opening up two, and those two panels, if we go over to the Explorer, by the way, the Explorer can also work in dark mode. So uh, just to keep things consistent, let's do that. Okay, nice. And uh, so now you see that we have Rec Control Duo and Rec Pro. Those two controllers are being discovered on the network by the Explorer. They are on the same IP address, but they have different port numbers. And now if I connect to, uh, to either one of them, uh, you'll see that um, now the Rec Pro, this one down here, uh, I'll just connect. And you see that I'm, I'm now able to work with that panel. I can disconnect and it goes back to waiting for raw panel. And then I can connect to this one up here and we have the same thing going on. So that's um, that's really helpful. That was multiple panels that we could start in this way. Um, so we have dark, dark mode, open, uh, don't open browser is another thing that could be useful because you see every time I'm basically doing anything with the application here, it's going to open a new web browser. Just notice this, opening up a new web browser tab and you need to close down the old ones. But it's uh, very nice that it does open up the web browser so you don't need to read a lot of text here. But there's a little option that is nice to know called don't open browser. So if you do that, it's just going to start and it's now your obligation to refresh if you want to, um, uh, to, to work with it again. Variations is another thing. Um, the, let's go back to the Rack Fusion Live. So just stop this one and then go back to Rack Fusion Live. Okay, so if we open this panel, go over here, reload, then we'll see this is standard Rack Fusion Live. It actually is exactly this model, but we have variations. This one, an old Unisketch panel, by the way, has NKK buttons. So these are plastic broadcast buttons with a nice sculptured cap, and it's possible to load that in. It actually has a difference for the topology, because if we go into the panel here and we connect to it, you'll notice that if, if you go into the... Um, both if you look at the SVG being delivered as a part of the topology of the panel, you can also study this, the, the, the topology. So if we look at components like this is component number one, you can see that from the little number in the, in the component there. It says it's a four-way button B4. So it has four edges you can detect. And even if I emulate it over here, you'll see in the events as I press it down, it has a reporting of an edge, edge number four. Now I get edge number one. If I press the upper edge, this would be edge number two and edge number eight here. So that reporting is happening for that first button. So that, that, that's what you get on the standard Rack Fusion Live. But notice what happens if I, if I use the variant uh, parameter. And if we go back to the list, you can see Next to Rack Fusion Live, it says that we have a number of variants available. NKK is one of them, and then one called NKK Joy, but that I know that's not going to make a big difference. So we just type in NKK here. So if we start this one up, and then we go here and we reload, notice what happens to the buttons here. They change. Notice what happens over here in the Explorer. They also change. You see, they are now indicated as NKK buttons. And if we go to the topology, you see the topology now reports that Hardware component number one is a standard button, still having LED capability, red, green, blue, still has the same display and so on. But the event that I receive, if I press it, you know, does not include any indication of edge anymore because there's no edge on a NKK button. So there you see variants are also reflected in the topologies and being delivered. The um, if you if you read the raw panel. Um, a document and you ah okay I think I oh wait I have it open as an open office document so in the in the description of the raw panel protocol it it will be stated that you should always ask a panel for its topology and use that so okay if you know that it's a right fusion live that connects to you you're sort of allowed to assume that okay if I don't have actually connected to the panel then I can assume a topology on file. But as soon as the panel connects, you should actually use that topology because it might be the latest or it might have uh, changes or variations regardless of what the reported model is. So the topology is all, the actual topology delivered by the panel is always the authoritative topology. And if you thought that um, the, the, the types, because we have this called type index here, uh, 124, is a reference, you see, because that is true for all these buttons. These are all type 124, these nine buttons, you see. And then when we get to button number number 10, which is probably 
Yeah, it's probably this one up here. Yeah, we can see that it says 10. Then we have a different type. Those references to types, they are really just a reference down to there's like a table here in the in the bottom. So here you see the JSON, which is the actual topology. And there you can find a type number 124 and 123. And um, you, you also see that there's a description of this one in the topology that tells you that this is a sculptured hard cap button, while this is an elastomer four way button with a display. And uh, there's some information surrounding that. But these numbers, you cannot look them up anyway. You cannot trust that 133 is always this. You, it, It's only valid within the topology. So if you fuse together multiple topologies, you would um, need to check if, if all these types are exactly the same. Simulating multiple different panels is really useful if you um, are using Skyhoy panels as they are meant to be used in a modular way. Because this allows you, and especially with an application like Reactor, which is our panel management application from Skyhoy, you can bring together many panels. Think about a mega panel. A mega panel would be like a transition block, then two um, uh, uh, cross point blocks um, for input selection and so on. And to, to set such three controllers up, if you wanted to integrate something with that, that would be pretty costly to get this uh, hardware over just for the integration work. So um, just consider how cool that would be if you were to implement such a mega panel. You could just type in like this and boom. Now we open this one up, Let's just zoom out and you see we have the transition block here. You have the uh, MK48 one and two. Now imagine those three modules in a physical arrangement. They would be next to each other like that. You have them all available right here and uh, even the uh, Raw Panel Explorer has, has already <laughs> updated, but let's just go out. You can see they're on the network, on the same IP address, different ports. You can connect to each one of them and have all the fun in the world that you want. There are a few uh, other little features uh, that I want to cover in this basic video on uh, using the emulator. And uh, one of them is the, um, the one called, let me see, don't show HVC ID. I also have one called show labels. So let's just do those and then update over here. Okay, I did something wrong. Let me see. Don't show HVD, show labels. Did I type something wrong? I must have. Down show. That's an interesting one. Okay, let's try that. So I think this is much better. You even see that this one has ah, okay updated over here. So if you zoom in on the rendition, it has labels. The labels are like the names that go with every single component. Those names are actually seen if you connect to these ones. Then you can see that those names are usually rendered over here, but <coughs> they are also mentioned in the topology summary here, M1, M2, and so on. Those names are often used inside Reactor for configuration, so that's convenient. But uh, by default, we don't show them over here. But we do show the little ID number in the corner. But if for whatever reason you want to disable that, we have some flags for doing so. It's also possible to choose another port, and that might be very useful uh, so you avoid collisions. So you can type in port and then say, let's have uh, port number uh, 9100. And then our controllers, let's just reload, it will be starting at 9100, 9100, 9101. And uh, let's just disconnect and go over here. You can now see that I have these two panels listed on or three panels, actually, is it not? Um, they are listed on alternative port numbers down here. Uh, 901, uh, 9900, <laughs> come on, uh, Casper. Now, uh, these, these are here, different port numbers, and that helps you to avoid collisions. And finally, uh, there's um, a nice little thing that uh, might be helpful for you as well, although we have the Raw Panel Explorer to, to do a lot of that for us, and that is the log incoming messages as JSON. Spelled like that. Okay. So, okay, open. Now, let's just go back here and uh, see this next to. Uh, okay, incoming. Yes. Yeah, so, if I'm pressing buttons, then I'm not seeing it. No, the incoming. That's that's um, probably helpful if you go over here and connect to. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Connect to one of these. Uh, you see, incoming messages is now being locked uh, out for you here. Uh, the flow message is like, you know, acknowledgement to make sure that we are connected all the time. You can see uh, what else is being um, sent over to the panel here. Let's click one of these 
uh, and send over a color like on. And there you see this is the JSON that gives you the um, um, the, the state uh, to give to turn the button on for hardware component number one. If you want to give it a color like this one, then it looks like this. It chooses color index four. If I want to uh, to pick a color here, an RGB color, it's also possible. And you know, I get red, green, and blue colors over. So this is a, a little uh, logging feature that is a convenience function of the emulator as well. Once again, it's all helping you to get started on using the raw panel protocol with your integration work. So this is why we did it. And uh, that basically concludes what I, I want to do in, in this video, showing you the basics of running the uh, raw panel dummies emulation um, application.